Hey everyone, welcome back to another AFK Journey video, and today I wanted to make a quick guide on who you should set your wishlist to. AFK Journey essentially allows you to pick and choose which units you want to pull for when rolling on the standard banner, making it so you don't have to rely purely on RNG sos if you're looking for a specific unit. With the game being brand new, they're offering a ton of pulls upwards of 200, and naturally players will take notice of this mechanic, wondering who are the best units to set for it. So that's what we'll be doing for today. I'll be going through each faction and giving you suggestions on who to set to get the most bang for your buck. If you're interested in checking this game out for yourself, the official release just took place a few days ago, so feel free to check it out. On top of the aforementioned 200 pulls, they're actually giving away 40 free units which can help you with building a team side away. It's playable both on PC and mobile devices. Okay, so for the uninitiated, the wishlist is a feature unlocked shortly after having access to pulls, letting you set which units you want to obtain from each faction, 2 S rank units and 2 A ranks, also known as 5 and 4 stars respectively. Whichever quartet you set for each faction will consist of your drawing pool. Essentially, no matter how big the game's character selection becomes, you can always compress it down to 4 units per faction. Currently, there are 4 as part of the standard banner, Graveborn, Lightbearer, Mauler, and Wilder, but there are more factions coming in the future as you might expect, so for simplicity's sake, we'll just be covering these 4. The point of this guide is to mostly focus on general coverage. As you know, AFK Journey just came out, so it will be a while before players make it to the PvP and Dream Realm stages of progression. That being said, I'll do my best to factor those into consideration, as some units are pretty weak in the early game but get better as time goes on, and vice versa. With there being 6 classes in the game, Mage, Marksman, Rogue, Support, Tank, and Warrior, along with there being 2 damage types, Magic and Physical, I want to make sure players have good coverage in every department, since auto chess games tend to encourage a balance and not a full team of DPSs. That's a pretty big noob trap people tend to fall into with these types of games, where they make their entire army consist of attackers, even though that's actually very inefficient. So with that taken care of, let's not waste any more time and get started. First, with the Graveborn, one of the scarier factions in the game both narratively and practically. They have a good selection of units to choose from, key of which being Cessia and Thorin, the two s rank units of choice. At present, Thorin is arguably the best tank in the game, effective at all stages of your progression and a vital asset to have in PvP. He comes with a massive amount of built-in sustain and can respawn himself once per battle, meaning enemies have to essentially take him down twice. Tank-wise, he's less of a traditional one in that he's not very bulky, choosing instead to rely on lifestealing and the aforementioned revive mechanic. Later on, this can be valuable when pairing him up with high HP teammates or high HP enemies thanks to his skills, hands down a priority character to go for. On the other end of the spectrum, we have Cessia, a ranged attacker and an excellent one all the same. Her ultimate's a summon that essentially turns a 5v5 into a 6v5, making her exceptionally good for map progression and the AFK stages as the minion she spawns happens to be a frontline one. Assuming she's kept in a safe spot, she has very good DPS and crowd control for just about every scenario. To my knowledge though, and from what others have said, she's less practical in PvP and Dream Realm due to both game modes being predicated on front-loaded uptime, which she doesn't excel at as her ultimate doesn't go off until later on in the fight. Even so, she's one of the best DPS units in the game throughout the story and will more than be worth using. As for the A-level Graveborns, my go-tos are Viperion and Sylvina. They're both damage dealers, only Viperion's a typical mage attacker with immense AoE damage while Sylvina's a backline assassin, so for the latter you'll want to use her to snipe out the enemy carries quickly. As for the former, he's surprisingly good in PvP thanks to winning the ultimate race with his energy drain mechanic, and when the conditions are met, he can potentially nuke the entire field for burst damage. So, those are the 4 Graveborn units I'd recommend. Moving on to the next faction, Maulers, the Beast Archetype. Maulers are a bit all over the place in terms of strength, but the two S ranks I put in my list are Shakir and Smokey. Shakir is an interesting one. He can do damage, support your team, and also tank a bit for your team. I was torn between choosing him or Brutus because Shakir is more of a late game scaler, better for Dream Realm and PvP, while Brutus is an early game boy who can tank and deal damage at the same time. From my point of view, I'm gonna say that Shakir is a better overall investment as he comes with a mixture of things, ranging from crowd control to lifesteal to attack buffing and damage reduction, all of which improve the more you work on him. It is hard to really define a niche for him compared to the other units as he's more of a generalist if you want to think of it that way. For Smokey and Mirki, these guys are excellent, contestantly one of the best supports in the game. They have a ton of healing and offensive buffing capability as they can buff attack and haste for your party, but more importantly, the healing and buffs come in the form of an area of effect, so if you can funnel all your damage dealers into that area, not only do they sustain themselves, but you can kill two birds with one stone by massively increasing your team's DPS output and survivability. For the A-rank units, the reasons are more clear, Odie and Coco. Prevailing Wisdom understands that 4-star rarity characters are expectedly weaker than 5-star ones, with a few exceptions. Odie is one of them. He's one of the few A-rank units in the game that can be viewed in the same caliber as S-ranks, a strong backline damage dealer who can basically work with any team, as all he does is deal damage, so you can use him as your main carry. 
Coco's a support with a bigger focus on defensive utility through damage mitigation and shielding, but she does come with a modicum of offensive utility as well, making her somewhat of a budget smoky. They don't do exactly the same thing, but it's kind of similar. Alright, that covers the Maulers, let's go into the Wilders, your elves, dwarves, and forest creatures. Of the three groups that I've mentioned so far, Wilders are definitely your most wildcard faction, I'd say. No pun intended having a lot of specialists and niche roles for the party. Nevertheless, my four choices will be Aeron and Huon for S ranks, and Lika and Damien for the A ranks. By the way, just as a disclaimer, I'm still trying to get the hang of every character's pronunciation, so if I'm wrong on some of them, please do not be offended. It's not intentional. Being a more tactical damage dealer, Aeron's early game is pretty subpar. He's definitely a late bloomer type unit, but one of the best for PvP and the later stages of progression where it's less brute force and more proper team planning. You do kind of have to unlock his EX weapon to really tap into the core of his gameplay, which means just having one copy won't do it. But should you manage to pull this off, you'll have one of the best crowd controller and debuffers in the game. Having someone who can forcibly group enemies in a position-based game is indispensable. On the other hand, Huon could not be more straightforward. She is a healer, the healingest healer that ever healed. This kid is by far the highest amount of sustain in the game, so much so that if you do not take her out first, she will likely make any frontline unit on her team indestructible, and in many cases with proper placement, trying to take her out is easier said than done. The main downside is that she's a one-trick pony. 95% of what she does is heal, but I mean when you have recovery capabilities of this level, you honestly don't need anything else. Her focus niche might make her less optimal in Dream Realms, where units like Smokey tend to outperform thanks to bringing more DPS buffs, but in story mode and PvP, she's extremely valuable. For the A ranks, we have Laika and Damien. So I chose Damien for being an accessible PvP option. He's an all-rounder support. A little bit of healing, a little bit of debuffing and crowd control, a little bit of offensive healing. He has kind of a mixture of everything. The crowd control effects afforded to his moveset are what makes him great for giving your team a quick edge in PvP against others. Like is more of an early game carry, a backline DPS with great area coverage especially with her ultimate, as well as boosting attack speed, increasing DPS, and offering some debuffs to enemies. Her value is derived from overall coverage, bringing a lot of everything to help you out in the early game. Beyond that though, she has a tendency to outlive her usefulness, and is primarily intended for story mode progression. Other than that, a serviceable jack of all traits. Last but not least, the Light Bears, the straight shooter faction if you will. Despite their more forward to the point attitude, choosing the best wishlist units is actually kind of tough, but for my money, I recommend Rowan and Vala for S rank, and Merrily and Quarren for your A ranks. Rowan should be prioritized for acquisition as early as possible. He's a great support due to being one of the few in the game who can actually supply energy for the team, in many cases enough to single-handedly refresh ultimates from 0% courtesy of his own. This makes him invaluable for PvP, which is all about whoever can get their ults off first, and of course in PvE that makes you clear through enemies really fast. Apart from that, he comes with decent recovery and support, but really the main selling point of him is that he's a walking battery. Once you acquire him, you don't really need more copies, but in the early game, do consider yourself lucky if you snag one. Vala's a bit trickier to understand, but in simple terms, she's an assassin type character who can snipe out the enemy backline, making her a fantastic option in the event you're dealing with tedious front to back enemy team comps. Even if you aren't, she's a good single target attacker with a melee and range mode that can make it easier for you to pick and choose who you want to go after, especially when playing manually. And if you have any experience playing auto chess games before, you will know how convenient target selection is. As for the A ranks, I went with Corrin and Merrily. Similarly to Odie, Corrin is just a great A rank unit. He can do damage, shield allies, and even has a modicum of true damage making him excellent for dream realms. He's one of those heroes that can carry budget teams or those who don't have a wide selection of characters to choose from, and is the closest to a hybrid unit that's actually proficient in both fields. You do need to unlock his EX weapon to get the most out of him, but considering he's A rank, you'll have an easier time getting more of him. Merrily is without question one of the best dream realm units bar none. If you can tap into her skill that gives her increased attack and rate of fire, she has incredible boss killing DPS. She's one of those units designed to lock onto a single enemy and get to work. So those are the four I'd choose for the Lightbearer faction. By the way, for those wondering who to swap out Rowan with after they get him, you can try Tamesha, she's pretty solid. That concludes my hero wishlist guide. I'll remind you, the game just came out and so things can potentially change very quickly as new units come out or as players explore and try out new strategies, but I feel pretty good about the 16 I chose. If you think there are other heroes worth mentioning, then definitely share them in the comments down below. Once more, if you're interested in checking this game out, they are giving away a ton of free stuff to celebrate AMK Journey's Maiden Voyage, so check it out using my link in the description. They're also giving away more than 40 characters, including some of the ones I mentioned in this video. Capitalize on that while you still can. For now though, if you enjoyed the video, it would be great if you could leave a like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at Varsvarim, join my Discord server, and check out my AFK Journey First Impressions video if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.